just like the elites do, just like the financial institutions do, just like the government does, you and I need to learn how to leverage debt. I know all you Dave Ramsey fans are screaming out there right now, but listen, leveraging debt smartly for investment purposes, not for consumer spending purposes, is one of the fastest pathways to get ahead. Let's look at some of the ways that debt is utilized to leverage cash flow for your favor. I'm a billion dollars in debt. You're a billion in debt. Is that all in real estate or did you use debt to buy gold mines as well? No, I use debt in real estate. Let's say I buy a property. Here's a property, I buy it, I finance it. Then we refinance it, we borrow out the equity. With the refinance equity, I bought the gold mine. And guess what pays for the debt, this? And I still own the gold mine. And that's why I went to tons of gold. So the smartest guys on earth are real estate guys like Trump, you and me. We borrow this to buy this that buys this apartment house, buys yeah. that, called oh, finance. Yeah. By the way, there's a lot to learn there, but the concept is very, very easy to learn. To go in debt, but that debt, instead of buying a car, buying clothes, buying things that depreciate in value, he's buying assets that return an income stream to service not only the debt, but the net profit then goes to him for doing so. So therefore, there's a financial incentive for him to actually borrow money, which leads me to another strategy with inside this leveraging debt, which is buying a boring business. Let's take a look what this young lady says. Boring businesses that could make you millions. That's usually what I'm looking for. One of the ones I think is fascinating right now is interior door replacements. I looked at one the other day. All they do is replace the interior doors in houses, which break down much more often than you think. How boring is that? This company is on sale for $125,000, but does 1.2 million in revenue. They essentially make money off the fact that they have services that they can provide to charge for, and a little bit of an arbitrage that they charge more for the door than what they actually pay for it. This reminds me of a class trip I took my son and I was a chaperone and one of the fathers was also a chaperone and he owned a family business that sh this young lady here would probably classify as a boring business. What do you do? Blinds cleaning. He cleans people's blinds. He goes to people's houses and they go dust the blinds. Blinds, not the house, not cleaning the house, blinds. That's all they do. And guess what happened after they started cleaning blinds? The customers, whether residential or commercial, guess what they started asking? Hey, do you sell blinds? Guess what they got in the business of doing? They took a little small business loan, took us some advance on a credit card, they got an inventory of blinds, and guess what they started doing to the customers? They started installing blinds, they wrote the ticket for that, they started making a profit and margin on what the blinds cost to them versus what they actually charged the customer. They sold that, they upcharged that, and guess what they did is returning service, cleaning the blinds. So this is a simple way of buying a boring business for you to make cash too as well, as an example of a boring business. Another boring business is laundromats. Another boring business is vending machines. Another boring business is a car wash. These are boring businesses that you don't think are actually cash cows. So these are things that people do on a frequent basis, everyday basis that you want to think about. It may not be sexy, but it's definitely something that people utilize on a daily basis, which in turn creates for you revenue. So therefore you're no longer part of a rigged system. You've created your own economic system. And now you're economically empowered. Third one, start your own sales business. I'll give you an example. I started my own sales business with less than 500 bucks by getting an insurance license. So I made my first couple sales in life insurance and annuities, and guess what I did with the revenue after that? I took $5,000 charged on my credit card to mail to five different zip codes, and I would invite them to a dinner seminar, and at the dinner seminar, I would educate them on their planning for retirement, how to save taxes, how to maximize with the social security system, how to maximize the Medicare system, how to maximize making sure that they protect their money from taxes and unnecessary losses in spending, so therefore, in the last chapter of their life, they're living their last chapter of life in financial dignity. Here's a sad reality for a lot of people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. A lot of the friends that they grew up with, a lot of family members that they grew up with, sadly, have passed away. And sadly, many people are 60, 70, 80 years old, they're lonely, they need new friends. Well, on top of that, do you want to compound the lack of financial management to, to add on to this burdensome part of your life if there's no finances and no friends to enjoy it with? Well, guess what I did? As a business, I took a $5,000 piece marketing campaign to mail to five different zip codes, to mail 5,000 pieces of mail to invite them to my dinner seminar. I spent another 1,500 bucks on food. But guess what? I turned that $500 license to a $5,000 investment to a marketing campaign to a $25,000 commission from my first seminar. And I did that for 13 years over and over and over and over and over again. And guess what? My best year is I'm making $300,000, $350,000 a year using that model, and not bad for a single father. 
raising three kids, no outside help. Had a nanny, had all these things, live in a very good neighborhood, so therefore my children go to very good schools. So if I figured out this $500 license, this doesn't mean you gotta go into debt and real estate. It doesn't mean you have to get $120,000 loan to start a boring business. I took $500. And I don't care if you're selling real estate, you're selling tax services, you're selling credit repair, whatever it is, you're selling landscaping. You know, you're selling snow shovel services. Very simple business like that. During season at the time, you can flip, 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 create customer accounts, create a route. We can charge people 20, 30, 40 bucks if that's what you're doing with the landscaping and, and, and snow removal route. This way you can create a very inexpensive business for very little capital. Which leads me to my fourth strategy, which is flipping things. Now, with that being said, in the news, Christian Dior, actually I'd say LVHM, just got exposed because they are discovered that they're Christian Dior bags. There was an Italian stakeout. They discovered that the Italian, these, these bags are Christian Dior. Even though they're being sold for $2,800 plus dollars, what did it cost them to make? 57 bucks. By the way, why should you be surprised? Now here's the crazy part. Guess which ethnic demographic LVHM sells a lot to? That's correct. The black and brown multicultural middle class community. Sad, horrible. In other words, we make middle class income and we buy some of the most luxury goods, expensive products in the world, and yet they're laughing at us because it only cost them 57 bucks and you and I grew up in families and in communities where people are getting their tax refund checks or going to loans. They spent their pandemic checks to buy these damn products, and they wonder why not financially ahead. You know why? Because that's called financial illiteracy. And not understanding how the system is rigged against to keep you broke. You see, consumerism is a way to keep you and I broke. And if you don't understand the way money works and you don't increase your financial literacy, guess what? For the rest of your life, 10, 20, 30 years go by, 40 years go by, you'll always be spending things, and next year you wake up, you're 50, 60, 70 years old, like, damn, I don't know retire one day, but I can't. One of the pictures I took when I first started my career, once I got my insurance license, I was at a stoplight and there's a guy scraping with a shovel, concrete, and he had an orange vest on. I noticed he had white hair. I said, man, this guy is 50, 60, 70 some years old, still working outside here in the heat. He's got no money working for him. Is that what I want to experience for the rest of my life? This guy's still working hard. And by the way, honor to him because he's out there working. He's not depending on the system, but he's working for his cash. But working for what though? Again, he's working for his cash instead of what? His cash working for him. So what do you want? Cash working for you or you working for cash? What do you want to do?